Marauders. Those little Marauders. It's a good name. A lot yeah. of, I can't get mad with a little tongue twister. M and M. M's a good letter. I've always thought it's not bad. Uh, Probably, I, I would say it's in my top thirteen letters. Top thirteen. Upper fifty. Okay, upper fifty. <laughs> <laughs> upper fifty, Jack. All right. I mean, honestly, um, when I'm looking at some guys that can produce, it starts off with one of the captains or the captain, Jimmy Pollock, number nineteen, uh, and is a senior from Sewell, New Jersey. He's a forward, one of the top guys. Now listen, we were both in the same broadcasting class last semester. We did a piece on these guys. They all talk about leading the team, and although they lost some key guys last season, there's like four or five key guys that graduated. They were seniors and graduate students. They're able to turn that leaf over to the next team. And they've even talked about, if you look on the bench over there, so you have those three coaches. The one in the middle, Dan Zamacchio, the head coach, Brian Ben on the left, and Ian the Glue Kliwu on the right. They call him the glue. They said he holds the whole team together. He brings a presence. Now, all three of those coaches have played at Rowan. The fans have that, too. Together. They all played together. So they bring that presence back out. Yeah, my compliments to Dan DeMonte. I think a big showing of a good coach, um, especially a good collegiate sports coach, is being able to continue success when your seniors leave. I mean, that's a big problem. You see it at every level, um, whether it's, you know, D1, the tournament in March, um, or even now. And, you know, Rowan plays in the NJAC, the New Jersey Athletic Conference, for some of its varsity sports. And you can see year to year how the standings change as seniors graduate and as new teams, new freshmen. So let's talk about some Rowan teams. Let's. Then I know you're a big field hockey guy. I am a huge and a big field soccer hockey guy. guy. So I, tell us about that. I can't say I understand field hockey, but I try <laughs> really hard. I understand ice hockey a little better. But um, a huge shout out to our field hockey team, as always. Went to the Final Four again at home. Big. Back-to-back -back conference championships. Um, and speaking of good coaches, Michelle Andre. Mm -hmm. She's uh, she's had a wonderful career, and all our all our Rowan coaches deserve all the credit that they get and all the success that is earned. Pretty sure softball head coach got well, something about Hall of Fame. I saw yeah. on Twitter or something like that. Makes sense. Uh, I'm not sure about her name, but I know she Kim got Wilson. some award. Kim yes, Wilson. yes, yes. Great lady. Great <laughs> coaching staffs over in, over here in Glassboro. So RTM, we cover, we do ice hockey. We did a little bit of football last season as well, or this past semester, sure. field hockey. Um, we're going to be doing basketball again, baseball. I'm hoping a little softball. Oh, you're both, some really? Everything, yeah. Yeah. No no pun. We'll cover all of all Yeah, of all of them. All of them. Yeah, uh, every single one. And pucks, too. And pucks. Yeah. Yeah. We'll Frisbee, maybe ultimate Frisbee. All, <laughs> all three Rowan teams here on campus, D2. They got men's and women's and the D3 men's team as well. All three are firing off all cylinders after all joining new leagues for this season. They went from playing, I mean, technically they're still D2 and D3, but the teams that they're playing, because a lot of people don't know, even if you're a D1 school, like Rutgers, they're still playing D2 hockey. You have to have a rink on campus. And unfortunately, we're in Sewell. We're eight minutes away from campus, so we can never be considered D1 hockey. Warm-ups winding down here. We're going to take a step off. We'll be back shortly with starting lineups, chance to honor America, and we'll be back shortly here at Hollydale Ice Arena.
Welcome back to RTN Channel 5. We're here live on YouTube on the RTN Channel 5 live stream. I'm Spence Arena is joined alongside Lee Kotz, and we're getting ready for this awesome game. Royal University is right here at Highland Ice Arena in Sewell, New Jersey, up against the Millersville University Martyrs. It's a good weekend for sports. I mean, we got this tonight, tomorrow, men's playing again. Uh, wait a minute. Are the Eagles playing tomorrow night? Yeah, Eagles, Giants. I know you're Eagles, I'm Giants. Yeah. Let's get that straight right off the bat. For all everyone listening, hopefully you're Giants fans. A lot of animosity in this booth right now. Eagles are going to lose right now. I'm about Tomorrow. 40 seconds away from tearing Spencer's head off <laughs> with that G-Men jargon. All right, here we go. Getting set at center ice. For the 28th point of the season, they'll be fighting for it. Here is Rowan. They'll come back to the blue line. Jared Cohen puts it back into the neutral zone. Pass and dumped all the way through to Millersville University. It comes back almost around the net. Back to the right side. Conlon looking for a man. We'll go to Ramos off the left side. Schroeder takes the shot. And just like that, popping the bottle off. Caught me off guard. Rowan gets on top. 1942. What a great year. Beautiful. <laughs> Beautiful shot. Just ripped it open to the top corner. Uh, great control of the puck. There's some smooth passing, too. Quick shift, very efficient shift. It doesn't get better than that. I don't think it can. I mean, 18 seconds into the game? That's a just, long time, though. That, a it is. Bit. But, like, one possession, they didn't even let it get to the defensive zone. That's it. Unbelievable play there by Tanner Schroeder. He'll Let's take, see if they go again here. Take a, another chance there. Goes through the legs of Will Garrison. Comes back Whoa. around. Here's Paul Keyes. I love that afro, man. I wish I had hair like that. I got to say. I think you could get a little flow going. You think so? Yeah, why not? I think my hair's a little too wavy. If you're committed. If I'm committed. Another shot from Schroeder goes right to the chest of the goalie. We got a ref, ref falling takes a down. I don't know if we got that. Hope he's all right. I don't, I don't know what's going on over there. <laughs> that center ice line could be dangerous. Of, uh, yeah, he's picking up the debris. A lot of unmovable objects on the ice Good over move, there. Good move, Stripes. I don't know. 
Listen, I'm wearing the, the Jaguar cheetah jacket. He's wearing the zebra. I think we're hunting for a one over here. We're at 19-18 on the clock. We're going to face off in the farthest circle to the left. A little bit of mumbo jumbo going on over there. They finally get it. Double you got to wonder if they're going to keep attacking that blocker side. You might as well. I mean, if it's that quickly, it'll snap it up, flash the leathers. 34 for the Marauders. Props getting a line change here. Marauders, too. Fresh legs out. So that was goalie Garrett Baldacci for the Marauders. Now, like I said, the Marauders are part of the CSCHC, and they play UPenn, Seton Hall, Millersville, Stockton, Westchester, Scranton, Bryn Athid College and PSU Burks, as well as Rutgers. It's a very big conference. Stockton in that conference will be here tomorrow night yes. to face the profs, keeping with that conference. It was right through his legs. They'll put it all the way to the defensive zone. Well, she comes out of net to help out the cause. will come around net. Some pressure there from Schroeder. Now up against the wall. We'll have it right in front of their goalie. There's the assistant off to his left wing side. Taken away by Rowan. Wheeling back around the net they go. The Marauders trying to clear the defensive zone. Won't be able to get it. 18-15 is what the clock will read here in the first period. So they got that goal pretty early on from Schroeder. Looking to capitalize on that. They've stayed in the offensive zone for a pretty long time. They have to switch the defensive side of things. Rowan was spaced out pretty wide, but they still couldn't break out for... About 20 seconds, there's a big hit behind the net. Well, that guy with the puck, we just had number seven, Ryan the Standard Echeverria. Now standard. He's, Why do they call the him the standard? standard? So they call him the Standard. He's not one of the captains. He's a senior on the team. He's been here all four years. And he's, there's no other way to say it, but the coaches and the players describe him as the standard of where players should be. The line, don't go under it, but definitely try to go over it. So Rowan stays with the possession here. They go back to the defense. There's Cohen. Looking for a man, comes back off of the right wing. Takes a shot right off the whiff, put on the left side of that goalie. Looked like Chandler didn't get all he wanted with that one. Wound up for a big shot, it kind of just skitters in it towards the low side of the coach. It was definitely a weak shot, could put a little more in it. It'll take another one, try to get a backhanded shot afterwards, won't have it. So the Marauders will try to make something out of it. They come back in the offensive zone, they'll push it and shove and fall to the ground. They won't have it, it comes through the blue line. And off to the right side. So another shot, stick falls. These low shots can really help them out later because they generate rebounds. And if they're generating rebounds, they have a better chance to score on some second chance opportunities. So I think they got to keep with this and hopefully it'll turn into more goals for Rowan. I mean, yeah, it's still mathematics, more shots, more of a chance to get goals, right? I don't know, I'm a communications major. <laughs> Me too. I took one gen, <laughs> gen ed math class freshman year. I did enough to get there. Yeah. <laughs> so you can put it to the wall. There's Conlon passing it around his goalie. Kyle Rink. Paul Keyes on the right side gets tripped up, and there's another pick from the referee. He comes around, jumping on it, it is Baldacci. So when you look at this roster, you see a lot of freshmen. Speed. Freshmen meet speed. Young yeah. kids, a lot of energy. They're quick. So three of the freshmen actually played semi-pro juniors here at Holly Dub before getting recruited to this team. It's a lot of homegrown talent like we mentioned before. And they're hoping to make it big, and they've, a lot of them have been starting, such as Riley Rudolph. So the Martyrs will have it in the defensive zone, the right wing side. Come along against the wall. There's Sean, one of the guys we just talked about. Putting it all the way around. Come again, gets hit in the wall. There's the Martyrs defense coming back up. Through center ice, past the Hyatt logo, tipped away by Keys. Keys will have it now over. To Schroeder looking for a second one. And he gets put in the wall pretty heavily there. Won't have a chance. Puck comes loose and the Martyrs recover. Not a big neutral zone presence for the Marauders so far. It's mostly been in their defensive zone. Yeah, they haven't been able to get past that first blue line that often. That's where a lot of games are won and lost in the neutral zone. If you can limit turnovers in the neutral zone and kind of control the puck between those blue lines, you got a good shot to come into the zone, uh, you know, in your favor. So you got 15 43. They'll send the face off circle closest to Millersville's bench. You got to say, I do like their unis. The I'm black. a big fan of diagonal lettering yeah. regardless. I hate, you know, like the Rangers and those Penguins. Oh, of jerseys. course, we have to. I mean, I'm Devils, your Flyers. You but anything else works out, I think. <laughs> Diagonal's a good direction 
across the board. Bad. Horizontal not, and vertical are so tired. Not a lot of teams do that. Yeah. It's nice. So for those of you watching, they have the black sweaters with the white and yellow trims. Um, kind of like, almost like a bumblebee reversed. And then Rowan's in the white sweaters with the brown and yellow. So Rick jumps and pounces on that puck to stop that play at 15-13 in the first. Maybe a little chirping going on in the crease pretty early in this for that. Yeah, you could expect that. Both these teams, let me kind of mention it, they're pretty tight Not neck and five neck. five minutes in. As far as the ACHA goes, Rowan's ranked 24th out of 352 teams. Liverpool's not that far behind with 37. So they try to get that out of their zone. It comes all the way back around the net. There's Cohen. Passes it back out. Zangaro looking for it. He whips around. Can't see it. Cohen still has it. Loses possession. Fred rolling near him as well. Almost comes out of net. Won't get it. Cohen again. He'll get him against the wall. A little bit of rebound there with the check. There's Zangara humming up. Almost by himself, the poke check from the Marauders. He'll have his own chance, blocked away by Rudolph. Something that clock at 14.35. One goal lead in favor of the Profs. Maybe get Cohen on a trip here on that last play. The first penalty of the night. Probably first of many if they're going to keep playing like this back and forth. Been a little chippy. I think they're going to let him play. If it's blatant, I think. We'll play yeah, the whistle. it's got to be bad. Not too much of presence has to be said yet from the refs. Except for the one that fell. That was <laughs> Except for him he falling. Was that, was, that was pretty funny. I'm not going to lie. So the props lose his face off here in their home zone. Goes back over. They're cycling. Looking towards the right side, back over to defense. Take a shot. passing on that possession. Executing pretty well, but they won't be able to get it as a dump from Rowan goes all the way back to Bolici. The camp behind that net, a minute 35 as the clock will read on that power play for Millersville. Coming left and right, not going to the right side or the assistants. Passing back up to the defensive pairing. Takes a shot wide about three feet to the right. And this is all about setting yourself up for the best chance. You're going to have to keep passing and find that one hole. They've done that exceptionally well with these tape-to-tape -tape passes. So we'll go back and forth here. The clock reads. 105 on the penalty kill. About halfway through that penalty kill for Rowan. And again, the defensive pairing is going back and forth, taking shots. A little bit too wide, left and right. Trying to find the hole, like you mentioned. Comes set again to the right side with the face-off circle. The shot, the one T, put away by the goalie. That was a great chance for Miller. They'll rank a little lucky that they couldn't get their stick on it on his weak side. The Washington Township native, Kyle Rink, doing a good job solidifying his slot there in the crease. Just 25 seconds left on the penalty kill, 13 in the period. 1-0, and they'll stop that clock. It's caught up in the net, and the goal also comes off the spokes. Good composure there by Rink. Just stick the blocker out, get it out of play, or out of contest from Millersville, <laughs> that is. <laughs> so tell me, Lee, I know you played hockey for a while. Yeah, I could have gone pro. It was just his ankle. could have right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I played growing up. Uh, I wasn't the worst kid on the bench. She got to the point where everybody else got bigger and faster. We could start hitting, and I was Fair getting clobbered. So. What position did you play? Uh, in roller hockey, I was a center. In ice hockey, I was a left wing. Okay. So you were yeah. fast. Well. Speed. Lenny McQueen, right? That's the name of the game when you play center. Like a butterfly. Exactly. He gets it. I love that. Uh, we were talking about Pixar earlier. But <laughs> Millersville jumps over that blue line, comes off the right side. They'll take that shot. The penalty is officially killed. Cohen comes off the box over the bench as a way for his next shift. We go back to even strength hockey, 12.45 of the clock, and still 1-0 in favor of Rowan. Keys comes down to the ground after almost a whiff shot there. Couldn't get it in time. We go to the right side. There's Garrison. He'll take a shot at it real wide to the left. And they're working on that side. I don't think you mentioned. They keep going at him. Again, those low bouncing pucks are going to generate rebounds and second chance attempts, which uh, anybody really can jump on. Tippins are crucial. It's all geometry. 
You just got to find the right spot. More math with you. What's going on today? I don't know, man. I, I, I got to take some math classes. Maybe sure that's... <laughs> it's a little board scuffle over there. Up to the wall. Stops play for a minute. Comes back around. Millersville has it. They try to clear. They go neutral zone. Stopped by the standard. Echeverria. Over to Nick Thomas. Dumps it in. Dump and chase. Almost a full effect. Skates around the goalie. Passes back out. Budley back in the defensive zone. Recovering it is Matt Egan, the senior for Sewell, New Jersey. Backhanded pass there over to Etch. And he gets hit to the wall before he can make another successful pass. First an 11 minute mark on the first period of play. Stop that. Get another stoppage in play there. He's touching that net at 11 4 in the first. I don't know if that got tipped or if he was trying to dump on that one, but it looked like it was a line drive into the net from the minute it left his, left his stick. Yeah, it's all about direction, right? So as soon as someone goes to shoot, you can see where that, the end of that stick, the little lick the tail where it's going. Just like you said, it looked like it was going to pop up. Looked strong, though. Yeah, it did. Got that going for it. It is. Which is nice. Listen, you can play baseball, but that's way. Oh, sure. Or golf. Get the Let's wrist go over. Golf. A little, little grounder action there. Too infuriating. <laughs> so it goes past the blue line. Another board battle. And that's the name of the game. You know, there's actually a drill for that. It's called the Crosby McKinnon drill. So allegedly, and I don't know, I'm going to say allegedly because obviously I don't work or play on those teams. Not, they're not good enough for me. As he comes set over the rink, tries to poke it and we'll get it in time. There's actually a drill. You start at the blue line. Take you on two lines and you board battle for three minutes in a row. It's called the Crosby McKinnon drill. That's how you get better at board battles. Thanks, coach. <laughs> you gotta offer some help as a player. Snags. His rink flashes the leather there to stop that at 10 23, almost halfway through the first. Still 1 0. I mean, you come into this game, the first 18 seconds of play, right off the bat, they score. And now it seems like it's kind of teeter tottering, a little bit of a seesaw. Just back and forth, but no one's able to finish. A good shot on uh, that goal. But the Marauders have definitely stepped up their defense and they're moving their feet a little bit more when the puck's in their zone. So the freshman Bianchi will come set from Buffalo, New York. The only New York native on this team. They have one for Philadelphia, a bunch of New Jersey hockey players as he gets hit to the wall. And we have a player from Canada, Ottawa. Shorter, who got the goal. Yeah, eh? Yeah? Maybe it's time to turn on the accent. <laughs> so it comes around, row on the left side. Hit immediately. It, it is getting a little aggressive, I will say. I think you're right. Come back in the defensive zone. Hunting down that puck is David Cutler, the sophomore from Cherry Hill. And your neck of the woods. My neck of the woods indeed. Yeah. Played a lot with David's younger brother growing up. Was that roller too? Or ice? A little both? A little both. A little both. I like to keep people guessing. Oh, of course. <laughs> Well, look coming again in the offensive zone. They're doing a lot of dump. They, it seems like their offensive lines aren't fast enough to come back into their own zone to try to score. Every time they come down into the zone, they're dumping it across. It's a good point, but still, they're not really chance. changing lines when they have the opportunity to. Yeah. They're tying themselves out. We rehearse the nine minute mark here. One nothing for the profs. Behind the net, gets pushed out. Here's the Martyrs again. Looking for an opportunity. They get three on two. A chance to start humming. And we'll get a stoppage in play here. At 8.55. An offside call like that is a real momentum killer uh, really for is. that squad. For any squad, really. So they're going to have to get on the same page. Especially since sure we said they were having trouble coming over. And Absolutely. Then. So Colin loses the faceoff, gets pushed forward back to the captain of the Ville. That's what the sweaters say. I, I like it. I like it. And it has a little flag on the side, too. Nothing wrong with short hands. Flag. Yeah. They may be losing the score game, but they're definitely winning the drift game. <laughs> I'll say it. I, I like the uniforms better. I, I love Roan. No, Roan has nice alti alternate uniforms. Have you ever yeah. seen those? Yeah. The stripes are sure, sure. real good. That's like old school hockey. I guess there's just two. We'll pull both of those out at the same time. But Kelton Gilm's around. There's Sean. Luke Sean. 
Garrison recovers from the boards, passes it around to the left side, past Keys, intercepted there, the Roosters zone by the Marauders. Kyle Rink has it, drops it there for Garrison, behind the net he goes, eight minutes left in the first. Goes front hand, leaves it in the back, trying to get a little too fancy there. Picked up by one of the speedy wingers, takes a shot, almost a one to the left-hand side. He's now the push forward. Rowan goes for almost a full line change besides the man who had possession of the puck. So he had no help there. Good hit there by Cohen on the near side. I'm not sure if it was in the shot. Rather Rudolph comes around the net. Cohen again. Has possession, loses it. Puts it back out. There's Rudolph. Off to the side, back again. And pinball action. Now back in the neutral zone by the Holly Doe Ice logo. Bouncing off the left boards. 7.15 on the clock. The Marauders come against that left board. Attempting to take it out of their defensive zone. Right around their skates, poking it. And they'll finally clear it, bringing it back. Hoping to get over that blue line. A little less than seven minutes left. Tries to go back in, a little bit of confusion. Tips it up and goes on the net to stop it at 6.52. So as far as sports here at Rowan, what are you most excited for for the semester? I'm really looking forward to baseball. Maybe that's just because I miss baseball. <laughs> In general, I'll take any level of play. It's not that far. Ah. Even Major League Baseball is not yeah, that far from happening. Yeah, pitchers and catchers are what, a month? Less, a little less more, than a month. It's come, the itch is back. The hockey's going until at least June, so. Yeah, let's take it one sport at a time. <laughs> <laughs> Feels just like yesterday your team got kicked out of the World Series. So they come back around. Seems like just yesterday, Rink. your team won the division and lost first round. Yeah. Spencer's a Mets fan, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> but enough about that. Rick stops for, uh, the clock at 6.34. Rowan Millersville. He jumps on there. And now they're getting the face-off circle. Closest to the Holly Havoc flag. The far side of the broadcast booth. So Rowan will finally get possession after losing that face-off. Come back around. There's Frateroli over to the right side. Egan comes around the net, looking for a chance to score. Dyer back over. Force himself back into the neutral zone as Frateroli approaching six minutes left in the first. He'll come around to David Cutler. Over around to Egan on the right side. Trying to skate through traffic and put it up is Zangara. Won't get it in time. Put it back on the board. Shot taken by Rowan and right into the chest of the goalie. Nice little grab. I wouldn't, I, I can't tell if the defense of Millersville got that much better or Rowan slowing down the pace of play. I think it's a little both. Like I said before, they're moving their feet more. Uh, they're skating. It's a lot less standing around waiting for Rowan to pass the puck and more kind of stepping up, trying to be a presence while they're in their own zone. But to Rowan's credit, they've been stringing together a lot of these long passes to try and get a breakout going, try and get some movement. Yeah, both teams point. really fighting for that, that chance of that, that golden breakaway. But that's always the goal. So they'll come back around, Chandler. Back over to the blue line, there's Egan. Poke check and taken away, intercepted by the Marauders. Attempting to clear their own zone, still a heavy offensive presence since they're already there from Rowan. Rowan trying to do what worked earlier in this one for them. Establish positioning, wait for a good shot at net, and then just rip it. it it's working. They're staying there. They've been there for at least 15, 20 seconds of real time. So they'll take it away. There's Bianchi. Dumps it again, keeps it in play. Down to five minutes, up against the wall. Comes back in the neutral zone. There's Chandler skating around. Brings it back to the defensive zone. Comes back on the left side. There's Cutler up against the wall. Gets put down. Take it away. There's Chandler. Chandler has it. Blue line they go. They say they're on sides. Goes left to right, left, and misses it. And forces the goalie all the way to his left. Another man there. That was him. He caused such a big hole. I'm not sure if the ice is that slippery today. If there's anybody got to go back out again, but everybody is, is falling. Everyone is falling. Doesn't matter if you're a ref, 
No matter if you're wearing white, yellow, or black and yellow, it, it, Wiz Khalifa does not matter. So another attempt there. Tanner Schroeder attempts to get in. Confusion. He put his hand up as if he scored. Yeah, I don't. I didn't see it. Until so the ref gave him a tap and said, you know, I don't. It was a good shot, but I don't think he got it. This is one of those plays you kind of just crashed in. It's like, it, you know, it might go in. Let's see what happens. He didn't get the interference call, so I guess it's okay. It's legal. So 422 on the clock in the first. one nothing in favor of Rowan University. They'll take the face off in the far left circle, closest to Millerville's locker room. It comes back in the defensive zone. There's Rudolph. Pass it through Schroeder again. Past the blue line. And uh, Millersville regains possession. There's Conlin, passes it off. Meant for Schroeder, goes all the way through. Nice work by Conlin there, getting in and trying to intercept that pass. Fortunately, no one was really home. He had nowhere to go with the puck. Yeah, it goes back to what we're saying. The teams aren't finishing. They're just trying to set up as much as they can, but it's that last step isn't coming, coming through. So Cohen and Rudolph getting set on defense as that pairing gets set. The starting line. Schroeder. Over to the shot by Sean. Won't get it in time. Another tip in attempt by Schroeder. Won't get it. Cohen has possession. Gets hit against the wall. Back behind the net. There's Conlin. One of the biggest bodies on the ice, putting his body on that line. Kept in there by Rudolph. Put it around the board, 3-10 on the clock. There's Cohen. Coming back around, Conlon doesn't see it. Comes off for his shift, and picking it up will be the standard Echeverria. Now Rick was calling for an icing there. They didn't give it to him. I think Echeverria beat him there. The Martyrs looking to make something out of this. Paul Keyes takes that chance away. Passes the neutral zone. There they go. Nick Thomas with an offensive pressure. Pressure, excuse me. Going to drink some more tea. 2.35 on the clock. Paul Keyes in the defensive zone. Passes it off to the right-hand side. The Martyrs have it. They dump it through. Ardite passes off to Keys. Back to Ardite. The net looks like he's a little bit off. They're going to keep taking shots and hope something goes in. Stick comes high. They're both pushing and shoving. Here come the hands. Oh, my goodness. Knew that one was coming. All right, so let's recap. <laughs> that was go, Reed go came out with great positioning, made the initial oh. save. Then all ten guys were swatting at the same puck. Nobody could get a stick on it. Yeah. Puck went up off the near post, off the crossbar, back out into the crease. From there, we lost it. Next thing we know, uh, a nice little tackle there by Dante. Ardite. Ardite? Yes. So we'll see. I'm not sure that's going to be two minutes of roughing. Is that game is conduct for five minutes? Let's see what happens here. Because he's, he's on the box, so I'm assuming if it was five minutes, we would have just put him back in the locker room at this point. Are they both going to go? No. Just just the prof. Still in the box. Like you said, that was, that was a big cluster of players going on over there. A lot of movement and a lot of sticks in people's faces got feisty very quickly. Multitude of conferences right now. We got one in Rowan's crease mm -hmm. down on the Ville bench. It is going to be a minor. And you're right, yeah, two minutes. So 2.12 on the clock. They'll have 12 seconds of even strength play if all goes well for Rowan. So actually, they will make that four on four. They'll give the penalty to the Martyrs as well. That goes to number 17, Adam Hennessy, the forward. He's got two goals in the season and 10 assists, totaling 12 points. And he has the fourth most points on this team. I got to say, Cole McCulley, 42 points on the season. Number 11 for the Martyrs. Very remarkable. Got to tip numbers. your hat to him. Uh, 21 yeah. goals, 22 assists. He's on the puck. He's hot. He's got streaks going on. 43 points in uh, in any level of hockey. It's impressive. Believe. Can you imagine that? Like, like Pee Wee hockey, 42 points. <laughs> this little six-year-old just running around back and forth, getting all those goals. 
How bad did your goalie have to be for that to happen? Or how good is the six-year-old? How good could a six-year-old be? <laughs> I don't know. Right now we're talking about this <laughs> hypothetical toddler. So it comes back around. Cohen has possession with... I would say the penalty kill, but it's not. We're four and four power play. Both teams, a lot more ice to work around with. There's a chance to get your skaters out, of let course. them create in the space. This is exactly what both teams needed in order to get more of a finish on their offensive hits. And it'll take a shot real wide there from Cam Chandler. Picks it back up on his own rebound. Backhanded pass off to the right-hand side. There's Cohen. Puts it back around. The shot by Rudolph, the defensive. They have two defense, two to offense. With Ryan Scott as well, the freshman from Manasquan. Excuse me, the junior forward from Manasquan. Approaching just halfway through this 4-4 power play. 120 exactly on the clock. Takes another shot. Confuses the goalie. The stick comes up, hits the goalie in the face. They're still going. Now the one-on-one. -on -one. Here comes the Martyrs. Now it bounced just over Cohen's stick. And there's McCulley. McCulley almost making something out of that breakaway. Swirling around the last minute of play here in the first. Here comes Scott. Gets pushed to the right after he tries to deke around the defender. 45 seconds up against the boards. It comes back out. Comes up into his chest. Has to pounce out immediately to stop that play. And Down the corner some, now. Wow. Kyle Dunnigan. Injured on the play. So a lot of pushing and shoving going on in this match. We saw some players being held back after the player got pushed down to the ground. And we kind of mentioned this at the top of the broadcast. Yeah. Going to be a pretty emotional game. It seemed like that's kind of coming to fruition now. Uh, 30 seconds left on each of those penalties. Looks like they'll bring out the trainer to evaluate him. See what's happening. We'll take a quick break here at RTN Channel 5. We'll jump right back in when things are coming back into fruition. We're listening live here on RTN Channel 5 on Spencer Reyes, and he is Lee Kotzen. Live here in Hollydale Ice Arena, I'm Spencer Reyes. He's Lee Kotzen. Quick shout out to all the family friendly family and friends. How little too fast there at home. We're tuning in, watching. I know we got a lot of people coming in. Fans too. Doesn't Fans. just have to be a family or well, friends. Well, I, mean, I sent this link to a lot of people. That's all I'm saying. And they text me to let me know they're watching. I just gotta let them know that I know that they know that I'm know that they know that I watch. That's very kind. Yes. So quick shout out to them. So we're still four and four here after the, the player fell down. We get an additional penalty for Rowan now. Movie gets a four on three. I haven't seen that in a while. Special teams is how you win most games. We'll see if this is how it turns over into the second period. The five on four in favor of Millersville. So we've got a lot of numbers going on right now. 20 seconds left in the first period as the four and four is about to be finished with 130 on that last penalty charged to Ryan Scott of Rowan. So McCulley, we talked about him. Look at how he's skating. Just the finesse of going back and forth. Push the goalie to the left side, comes back right, the block, poke check by Cohen. And just like that, the buzzer will sound. So Great awareness by Rink there. Yeah. Puck was bouncing up, deflected all over, and you could, he never lost sight of it, never lost track of it. A mark of a good goaltender. So 118 left on that or penalty kill for Rowan going into the second period of play. What advice do you have for the profs? Well, uh, you know, Millersville is going to come out. They'll have most of that penalty to work with. Uh, after a nice little break, they'll be able to come out with some fresh legs. So I think they're just going to have to stay up on defense, 
play smart and not give up any uh, passes across the middle so there'll be attacks that weak side of the net. Let's play devil's advocate. Let's jump on Millersville's side. What That's would you, what do you advise? Well, they've been crashing the net for most of the first, haven't had much success. I think you got to spread it out wide a little bit and try and generate some side-to-side -side movement, get Rink out of the crease a little bit, and then try and get one in. That sounds like a plan. Hopefully they're listening right now to the advice you, right. former hockey player. Former hockey former player. player. Could have played on the team. Could've well, I told team. you that it was just his, his ankle. ankle. It's just the ankle. Just, <laughs> I, had it, so I had it all going for me. <laughs> Thank you so much for tuning in. This is the first period of hockey is finished. Rowan tops Millersville one to nothing in the first. We'll be back for second period of action. The next 20 minutes of play is live to RTN Channel 5 in Hollywood Ice Arena in Sioux, New Jersey.
Welcome back to the Road Television Network live here on YouTube. I'm Spencer Reyes. He's Lee Kotzen. We're entering the second period of play here in Hollydale Ice Arena in Sewell, New Jersey. The Rowan University Profs are up 1-0 against Millersville. Live on YouTube. I like that. Yeah, live on YouTube. It's got a nice ring to it. Yeah. None of this cable stuff anymore. <laughs> no cable. Only 2023. streaming. 2023. Well, this is free, actually. If you got Wi-Fi, you're good. Sure. You're at a Starbucks, you can watch this game right now. You got data, too. You don't even yeah. need Wi-Fi. You really don't. Yeah, not at all. But yeah, so I mean, both these teams coming off strong. Let me said a very even match. So for those who don't know, the ACHA is like the biggest of the biggest. It, it's, it's every college team ever that's not D1 plays in this league, D2 and D3. And they release rankings about every month. The last ranking was December 11th. Now, they haven't made one for January yet, but as of that fifth ranking, we're in the Southeast region. Both these teams are actually. Roan is ranked nine, and that's, again, out of like... 40, 50 teams. Is Millersville, is this their club team too? Yes, yes, club. they're D2. And they're on 15. Yeah. They're not that far behind them. I mean, it, both previous, both teams are pretty neck and neck when it comes to stuff like that. And now the Profs have three games left in this season. Tomorrow they face Stockton here at 8 p.m. On the 28th, not this Saturday, next Saturday, will be senior night for all these guys leaving the team. 8 p.m. start against Providence College. And one more game, February 4th at Drexel. That was meant to be here today. They switched around some of the games a while ago. Um, and that will be in Philly at 7.45 p.m. before the playoffs start. It feels a little early because I know NHL doesn't start until like yeah, around, what, what, May for playoffs? I think, I around think maybe April, end of April. April, end of April. Yeah. But since we're in college, a little bit different schedule here as they get ready for the second half of the semester. Taking some fun classes. Yeah, I mean, I know we're taking a class together. <laughs> Was it special motion graphics, motion and special graphics, something? Some, some order of those combination words. Combination of those four words. A lot of Adobe stuff. So we're bringing more graphics to sports like this, like hockey and baseball for this upcoming season. A lot of good round sports. Yes. Even our club, I mean, yeah, club like sport. Yeah, softball, right? Yeah. A lot of club. Club softball team is always, a, always a, puts on a good show. Our rugby team, too. They're yeah, top, of the, top of the food. They are. Okay, right there. And I guess our hockey team, whatever. Hoping, <laughs> oh, whoa, oh, oh, whoa, watch yourself. <laughs> Their friends and family are tuning in as well. You do not disrespect them. So here they come back on to you guys, that beautiful shot there of our production team. Kyle Rink, AJ Colella leading the crew, and the profs back on. Now, I love that guy's voice, it's PA. I started doing PA over that uh, rink. Yeah, no. He's got the flashy suits. I'm never going to beat him. It's the, uh, he's got that little Arr! in the back Arr! of his throat. It's this guy. Yeah. Although, it he, is awesome. we, we came in and he played the, the Saturday Night Live <laughs> opening music. <laughs> Which they always do, and he goes, yes, they Saturday do. night at Holly Duff, but it's Friday. But it is Spencer. Friday. It does have to be Friday. It's Friday. It, they might have mixed up the dates a little bit. You, you might have been for the next maybe one. Maybe because, you know, they changed the game from Drexel. Oh, uh, okay. Maybe just they're a little, uh, I, I don't uh, know, out yeah, of no. sync. Yeah, maybe. But uh, it was, is a Friday. He does have the cool suits, though. I'll give him that. I'm never going to top him. Yeah, I like the, the M glitter. There was an NBA silent reporter a while ago. Craig Sager. Yes, yes. Yeah. You're getting there with this leopard I only jacket. got one, though. I got, I got to build on the collection. Yeah. Tell you what, more. I'm gonna start. Uh, I think I'm gonna start wearing leopard print shirt right? yeah. jackets. Yeah, we'll do it together. Yeah, at class, the Adobe class. The whole thing, it just works. Yeah, just I do have the whole suit. It's only brother jacket though. Love a man and animal print. I went, I went half animal. But yeah, so both teams really animal out here, become the beast of the ice. We have Millersville University Martyrs against the Rowan University Profs, up one to nothing after a nasty hit on the side for the Rowan Profs of Ryan Scott. We'll have 118 in the box to start off the second period of play. And we have a brand new set of 20 minutes on the ice here at Hollywood Ice Arena. Rowan is coming out shorthanded, but I don't think they can afford to be passive. I think they got to still play their game, be aggressive, uh, take advantage of any turnovers in the neutral zone, and still just go to work. That middle 18 will be gone before they know it. That's still nobody's game, so they really got to tune up here and make sure anything's, nothing's going to come out of sort. They stay in their defensive zone. That's been the name of the game for the Martyrs. Not a lot of coming off into the offensive zone of play. They come along the, along the right wing, taking a little slow, waiting for that right pass. And just what we talked about, this is your second penalty kill of the night. Well, technically third if you include the 4-4 four four as well. And they come set from the blue line. A shot blocked by the Profs. A lot of block shots tonight for the Profs. Interesting choice here. They don't go for the dump. Edge goes to the side, and they won't get it in time. Almost gets the one tee. Comes back around, Echeverria. Back over to Ardeen. So 
Roan has possession of it. They'll dump it this time instead of chasing it. Again, the standard. He's right there waiting for it. He goes coast to coast. He skates off for a shift um, on the ice. And now Chris Conlin stays by the Hollywood logo, keeps it in play. Ten seconds left of the penalty kill. He's still going for it. The one on three gets the poke check. And the Martyrs put it back into the neutral zone. He put a move on, but there wasn't much oomph behind it. I think that was more just to eat up some time. Not a legit chance. I got to say, one of the best sounds that attracted me to the game of hockey was the clanking of that goalie stick in the penalty kill. Would you call it a clank? I think you could clank against clank? the post. Yeah, I would say clank. I would say it's more of a slap. So, a slap. Okay, we'll go to the slap. I like the, the consistent slap on the sure. ice and then the puck it's hitting nice, the board. It's a nice, sharp sound. I like, it's very, you won't find it in other sports. Baseball's got good sounds. Oh, yeah. You hit in the right sweet spot of that bat. But I, I, I still wouldn't go clank. <sighs> Fine, I'll say clank. I'm trying to exchange my verbiage here. Yeah, but that's just, that. that's wrong. Yeah, it's wrong. wrong? Okay. That's not what Doc Emmerich says. He actually has, like, what, 300, 300 words, something yeah. like that? do some of that. 300 verbs? I want to hear pitchforked later tonight. Pitchforked? I used, I'll use, da I did, I think I did dagger earlier. So you come to the side, the Marauders have it behind the net. But you can't force it, you know? Behind the blue line, it takes a shot. Real wide to the left-hand side. 17.45 is the clock will read here. The second period, a shot there by Scott. Comes along the board. Millersville recovers. Frateroli skating to the center ice. Loses possession. Bumps to his teammate. Martyrs come off sides. Comes back and forth a bunch of times. Loses possession of that puck. Some extracurriculars over near the top of the circles on the near side and Rowan's end. A little bit of shoving. Didn't necessitate a whistle blow, though. Maybe if he went to the ground. <laughs> We need some binoculars up here in the booth. Oh, yeah. So we can see everything that's going on. Chris looked I would do a monocle. Monocle? Yeah, why not? You, I, if you have that jacket, I should get a monocle. <laughs> then I want a telescope. I want a telescope. So they come in the offensive zone. Here is JT Zangaro going left and right. Shoots a little bit high, about a couple feet up across that Gatorade bottle. You got to love a good bottle popper shot. Like that first goal by Tanner Schroeder in the first. These past few trips down the ice, the props have kind of left a little too much up at the point. No one's really been getting home, getting low to the net to jump on those second chance opportunities, those bouncing pucks, those rebounds that we were talking about mm -hmm. uh, in the Vice first versa. period. Yes. So if they get more people down low, they'll probably have a better opportunity because you just saw on that one, they sent it home mm -hmm. back into the slot. Nobody was there except four Millersville players. I mean, now they got a chance now. They're in the face-off zone furthest away from us, but they're in the offensive zone. All five guys are here. They could rotate, cycle around a little bit and get a chance to score. So they win that face-off, passing it all the way back. There's Garrison, puts it back into play. The Marauders quickly intercept that pass. Now with the two-on-two, -two, pass center ice. The dump and chase, in effect, comes around. Won't get it in time. Waiting for him are the Profs' defensive pairing. Come back around, gets it, backhanded pass. Blocked away by Keys. Really good offensive presence there by Keys. Goalie comes down the net to help the cause, puts it back around. And they'll keep it behind their net. The Marauders from Millersville, Pennsylvania. Trying to make some motion. Tiptoes the line on that onside. Zangara again, putting some stick on that one. Fred are really doing a good job of getting low, which we were just talking about. He's setting himself up for a shot, not a lot of movement. So a lot of players getting tied up here, losing the puck at the skates, not seeing where it's going. Frateroli touches the top of that crossbar, comes around the net. They stay in play. Chandler humming after it, won't get it in time. Goes off to Scott. Here's Cohen, looking for an opportunity. Comes left again, they keep it in the zone. Scott There's tried Rudolph. to get a stick on it to bounce that one in. The good thing is, they are keeping you in that zone. Of course, as soon as I say that, broadcaster about curse, announcers jinx. They go to the neutral zone. Well, they're back the in as the shift anyway. steps out. Jeez. 15.30 left in the second. A little spin of Rooney there from Chandler. Poke check by Scott to keep it in play. Chandler over to Scott. That was a backhand passing. If we'd have executed that, that would have been pretty drippy of a play. A lot of momentum getting pushed back and forth there. 15 16 is what the time will read. Not a lot of action for Rink 
so far in these four minutes and change. It hasn't had a lot of shots on him for the beginning of the second period. Millersville hoping to change that here now in their offensive zone on the far side near all the Rowan flags. So if you look over there, they got the women's um, tiers on 2016, 17. You say women's or women's? Women's. Women's? Women's? Yeah. You're getting question everything right now. Well, <laughs> trying to keep you on your toes. 16, 17, 2019, and 2020 champions. That's, that's a big feat. They're well on their way for their fifth trophy. So stop that play. Icing goes all the way back. 15.06. That same face-off circle for a draw. It's really interesting how many teams play here at this arena on both sides. Yeah, it's kind of a kind of a hub. Even for teams outside of you know the South Jersey, greater Philadelphia area. When we came here, there was a bunch of, well, I guess I would say six-year-olds practicing. About 50 of them doing up-down drills. It was awesome. Can you talk about another drill? Coach's know. quarter. Oh, the coach, yeah, I guess. Sign me up. Millersville keeping the puck in the zone. will lose it. Recovered there by Rowan. They come to the offensive zone. They'll lose it to the Marauders. Humming by himself. Fakes the slap shot. Comes in. Not enough power behind it. We stop at 14.36. So you're talking about a rink got some action. After you said about a minute or so after, he finally gets a shot on net. So we talked about the Brown Profs games. They only have four left. Millersville actually has six. So they'll play Udell tomorrow at home. They'll travel back to Pennsylvania. It's about an hour, two hour ride. The 27th and 28th will have two games against Burn Athen as the puck comes around into the offensive zone. Recovered there. Icing is called. 1426. February 3rd, they play in Westchester. February 4th, they play at home for the last home game of the season, senior night against Scranton. They'll finish off the season on the 11th in Georgetown. So one thing that the profs have done really well, the ACCHL tournament they had in Virginia, I want to say it was November 4th through the 6th. And they played, again, all these top D1 teams. They went undefeated. They scored around 20 goals in four games of play. That's like NHL numbers. Definitely something uh, to be proud of for this team and this coaching staff. Um, and you hope that with the postseason approaching, they can kind of take something like that and use it to build their confidence, build their chemistry. It's their first year in that brand new league, and they're already on top. Second place, that we said, behind Penn State, which is one of their big rivals these past five years. They lost the first two games of the season at Penn State, and they're hunting for them. They hope they see them in the playoffs. We come set 14.08 on the clock in the second period of play. Again, in that far face-off circle to the left. Both players come for the draw. Rowan gets possession. There's Rudolph, pass around the side. Cohen, one of the assistants, through center ice. Schroeder gets a stick on it. Conlon falls forward. The whiff of a shot from Sean. And Schroeder will not get that shot. Another player falling. Comes all the way around. Rudolph was looking up for a trip. Might have had a case. He's had another player fall down. There's no sticks being put out. I don't know what's going on. And yes, probably players are falling because there are sticks out there, like you said, but there's other times they're just, that's it. They're just losing the footing. Tripping over the blue line. That was Again. You'll get hit in the face there after he's on his knees. Conlon over to Cohen. Cohen looks to clear that blue line, does so. Gets a line change out of it as well. Fred roll on the left side, gets put on the wall. Here's Zangara. Frelly tries to spin up. And it looks like Dyer will hit that puck up into the net. Fred Rowley coming up pretty slow there. Looking for a penalty. Won't get it. over there with number five for Millersville. You want to help me pronounce this one? Kohada. Kohada? Kohada. Dennis Kohada, the defenseman. Silent J's were always your thing. I'm Spanish. <laughs> what did you expect? <laughs> I don't know. If there's a CH that's supposed to be a <laughs> I'm all over it. <laughs> there's no C. I know, not oh, okay. I see what you're saying. General. I see what you're saying. Yeah. Okay. I got it. I, yeah. I thought it was the other way around. That's 13 on me. 13 years of training just for that moment. Yeah. Whew. Wow. 
We'll do the horror after this game. <laughs> so Dyer loses that face off, gets put out of play there. The fans get a souvenir. At the top of the clock at 13.04. Painted Black, what a great song to pump up the fans here. We have a little bit of a showing here from Rowan fans. Actually, a lot of bit of a showing puck our head around. Probably from both teams, Pennsylvania is not that far out. Like I said, only one, two hours away. I believe that's northern Pennsylvania. That's what Nick Wiley was telling me. I don't know if I can believe him or not, but that's what he told me. He's one of our guys here at RTN. Kind of trustworthy. I don't know. Nick Location, Wiley's a good geography. Kid running a camera right now. Uh, yeah. I think, what is he on? Two? One? Camera two. He's over there waving oh, to us. Close up. He's, he's saying, what's up? Good Gets hit put in the wall. What a hit. Less than 13. They'll take a shot. Gets put out all the way behind the net. The Martyrs have it. Now still in their offensive zone, attempting to get a stick on that puck. Put him against the wall is Egan. They attempt to clear and they will. Goes neutral zone. Humming is Frateroli. Dyer on his left side. Goes right to left. Open hole. And he gets it. The bottle pops up and down. Road University with the second goal of the game. A little bit of voice crack, but Frateroli puts it on the board. Two to nothing. You can put that one there. Check out the replay. Letting his presence be known, coming up through the zone, pulling back at the top of the circles and just letting one rip on net. After his little shoving match in the corner, he comes out on top. Love to see that for Rowan. Love to see that and for Mr. Michael Frederoli. It's just like you said, people being down in the zone to help out. He revised the screen. Almost interference, but they didn't get it. He still gets the screen. Pushes him so far left, you get the hole on the right, and he puts it in. So 2 nothing for the props. The ref falls again. This poor guy is having I, a rough night. They're asking the for the same, training crew. It's the same one. Oh, my goodness. This is not good. So we'll take another step off here. 12 19 left in the second period of play. Rowan leads 2 0. You're listening live to Rowan Television Network on YouTube. Welcome back to RTN Channel 5. Live here on YouTube on Spencer Rays. That's Lee Cosman. Took a short break. One of the referees um, unfortunately fell down. He's back and he's ready to go. The trainer said he's cleared. Quite a spill. Uh, obviously, you know, you hate to see that happen. Very scary. But uh, he got up. He seems all right. So happy to have him back. But it's not even like the refs. A lot of the players are falling too. Yeah, you were just saying when we stepped off, there must be something up with the ice a little different than usual because there has been bodies flying all over the place. Well, listen, I'm a Giants fan, but let's hope this isn't meant life, right? We're not, this is not the 49ers. We're not going to complain, like, oh, I'm the same playing conditions. No, 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 we're not doing I that. I don't want to talk about the Giants with you. <sighs> of course We'll talk are. about the Giants all you want on Sunday. Yeah? Okay. All right, we'll talk about that. So we're back here in the offensive <laughs> zone. They lose possession. The Marauders take it off of their offensive side, up against oh, the board and the wall. Wow. I mean, that was great. 12 minutes left in the second. Eight minutes down. Humming with a three-on-three three offsides call. Again, Millersville had one of those earlier in the game. Rowan's getting 
snag for one here. Just one of those momentum killer offsides calls. You just got to make sure you're on the same page with the rest of your forwards. Because you just get too scenario. excited. You pass the line, and you're like, oh. As soon as they blow the whistle, it's like, man, got me. Got me good. So they'll take the face off and the draw in the circle in the neutral zone. Closest to actually our headquarters over there. Down and below on the right of the bleachers. We'll talk a little bit about the sounds of the game in the second intermission leading into the third. So they'll attempt to dump that and chase it. Look at the dump, they won't get the chase. Look at the recovery though, after Rowan loses possession, they're continuing to work that side of the wall. It's working for Millersville. They keep pushing him to the back left. And now they get it successfully. Here's Scott. Scott, the pass meant for keys, blocked there by the defenseman from the Marauders. Phenomenal play by Seifert there to break that one up. Uh, Profs had a man on the far, on the near side, but uh, he was able to lay out and stop the pass from getting through. There's not a lot of times to see hockey players like that jumping on and diving to block a pass. Usually it's a goal or to get in the way to help out the goalie, but it's better than That's nothing. the kind of guy that you want to play with. You want him of coming course. off your bench. Of you course. know he's going to go out there and give whatever it needs to happen in order for his team to win. You need a gritty guy out there who's going to jump in front of it and help out the cause. So Rowan, again, stuck in that back left side. A mouth guard looks like it fell out. Over a board battle up against the wall. Recovered there by Paul Keyes. Back in a pass to Echeverria. Lose possession. Puts it all the way back on the other side. Here's Cohen. Attempted to put it on the right wall. Comes through, Echeverria on the right side, looking for a man, coming back off the ice. The shot real wide there from Thomas. Thomas gets possession again, right into the chest, lower area of the goalie. It's the same thing, but if he's getting an open look on net, you gotta give him the puck, he's gotta fire it in there and just try and make something happen. If he can't get it in, then like we talked about, you try and generate a rebound, somebody nearby can hop on one of those bouncing pucks get the second chance look and try and get in the net. And you could tell the Roxbury native wanted the puck. As soon as he came off the ice, he was hunting it down, calling for it, tapping on the ice, and he took two consecutive shots there. Roxbury native up there with you. <laughs> you, think, th you think he believes in Central Jersey? North. That's a little far it's north close. of me. Anything above it's Trenton far is... North. That's, no, that's that is not an argument. We'll have sure. to talk about that off air. That's not a thing. So halfway through the second, he stops that play at 9.56. We're going to face off here again in Rowan's offensive zone as they keep the play on the right side of the ice. So in the far face-off circle in the top right, here's Tanner Schroeder. Conlon recovers. Immediate shot by Schroeder, blocked by the defensive pairing from Millersville. Wayne Prim is gone. Has it, loses it around his skates. Shown's still working back there. Even after the puck's been cleared out from behind the net. We talk about extra effort players, that's an extra effort player right there. Cherry Hill guy, <laughs> I'm telling you. See, that's by you. That's when I would say, yeah, it's by you. <laughs> well, it has to be by you, because it's your town, but. Here's Cohen recovering the defensive zone. Through the neutral zone they go, almost touches the net around the glass. Goes behind the goalie, waiting for him as a speedy Scott. He's one of the players we talked about that's been here for a while, playing on the junior, semi-junior teams. I believe he played in the USPHL. There's David Cutler, another one of your guys, <laughs> skating on the right side. You got a lot of guys in this team, huh? Everybody knows. <laughs> Everybody knows. Phil you. you get a Philadelphia for basketball, you get a Cherry Hill for <laughs> college hockey. Fair enough. And it just touches the net. Another souvenir. This is what I toss it to me. I'll take that puck. And they won't. I don't know if they can hear us. Doesn't seem like he has these. Yeah, no, he, maybe he should put there. on a headset. Maybe, maybe he would hear on us. On the boards. <laughs> 8.49 in the second. 2 nothing. Rowan. Again, that far face-off circle on the right-hand side by the Havoc logo. This time, the entrust center, Chase Dyer from Malika Hill. Along the glass, and Garrett missed it with his glove. Falling down is Cutler. Humming through McCulley. McCulley the pass a little too far up for his fellow right winger. 835. Zangara might not have got a stick on the puck, but he did just as much to break up that play just by being there. His presence was able to disrupt 
and uh, he's able to save a goal. Ron definitely did a good job at that with their players thus far. Comes along the right side board again. Looking for a shot, McCulley skates through traffic pretty impressively. Pass off to the same winger. And a lose possession, going back to the edge of the neutral zone. Zangara has it. The four on one, just to buy some time, dumps it to himself. No one on the side waiting for him. Frateroli jumps in front of it, has possession, gets sandwiched into the wall. There's McCulley again through the legs of Corey Owens, the sophomore. Chandler keeps it in play. There's Frateroli. Chandler on his left, passes a little too far ahead. Wheeling around that net. Scott, the unintentional hit. Can you call it an open ice hit? I'd say more of a shove. Yeah. He I mean, did go down. I would say shove over hit. I'll take that. Wheeling around, David Cutler tried to find the hole there. The goalie was way ahead of him on that one. So Scott again taking a shot, blocked. McCulley waiting for it. I feel like we're seeing the name quite a bit of this. As he has a lot of speed, he comes right and left, shoots again, comes wide on the left side. Seven minutes left in the second. Owens dumps it over to Egan. Not a lot of aggression from the Frost right now. A lot of their players are standing around. Seems like they're waiting for something to happen instead of starting something to happen. And there's Owens. Passing back around to Scott. Tries to wrap around. Won't get it. Over his defenseman, Keys. Waiting for him. Back to Scott. By the faceoff circle. A couple players on the ground. Keys will not keep it on sides. He'll skate back to the edge of the neutral zone. Instead of going to the defensive pairing, he'll go to Owens first. Scott takes it away. The referee jumps over it. For a second time. Can we get a third? Won't go that way. Just stay on the left side of the ice. Dump real high and wide to the right. Approaching six-minute mark. Another shot there by Millersville. Gets pushed up high by Rink. Coming for is Scott to keep it out of reach of the Martyrs. Thomas has possession, loses it. Back to the defensive zone. Keys looking for it. Garrison on his right side. Pushed up against the wall. Looking to make a pass. Ooh, that's Garrison in the corner. Tries to put it out. The Martyrs stop it. Back and forth, the pinball. And Keys on the far side. 5.30 on the clock. Comes back around. The poke check. Forcing to go left and right. And Rink clears it. Still back in the offensive zone. Here the Marauders. Past few minutes, it's been all Marauders the whole time. They've been playing with aggression. Uh, they've played with a lot of speed, too. They flipped the script a little bit. They're adjusting. A little back around their old goalie. Pass it back. And they come set. Thomas has possession. Over to Rudolph. Rudolph with the shot. Another bottle popper comes up and down. From the blue line, you can get it in. Three to nothing, Rowan Props. I stand corrected. That was the top of the faceoff circle. Just as before, uh, you know, their first goal of the game. He takes the puck, he kind of skates in, just waits and waits for that window, fires it in, top shelf. Take another look at it here. Like you said, from the top of the circle, top of the far side circle, just rips it into the upper corner. Now 3 nothing game in favor of Rome. A lot of momentum here going into the second intermission, the final intermission, for the last 20 minutes of play. A little less than five left in the second. Up by three, humming along is Bianchi. Bianchi falls down. Martyrs recover. The push and shove from Cohen. Cohen bullies his way onto the puck, dumps it to get it on side so Roan can reset. Echeverria again standing up. Oh, a little bit of fall there. We come back standing on side. Yeah. That, that's just standard, not standing. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't use that verb yet. I'll, I'll make sure to try to use that action verb, though. So 420 on the clock. Standing isn't much of an action. Well, it's, it's an active. Well, yeah, but yeah. Uh, it's a gerund. G E R U N D, a gerund. Reverb. See, I'm a grammar coach, too. Yeah. 
Okay, really my coach, just trying to coach, show me up. I'm not trying to show you up. You talked about math three times tonight. There's a chance. So they both fall on the ground almost immediately. Pushing and shoving comes. Calling for the penalty. They'll get icing. 3.56 with the clock will read. Like we said, though, refs are letting them play. They yeah. know it's going to be a scrappy game. The tone was set pretty early on. Not the first time that somebody's been wrestled down to the ice. A uh, little Greco-Roman, even, if you will. <laughs> Let me ask you, Lee. Ask let's, let's, let's turn a little NHL action on here. If you could watch anyone in their college days right here at Hollydale against Rowan, who would it be? Oh, boy. Yeah, it could be Flyers. It could be anyone. It could be a little biased with it, too. Jack O'Callaghan. Jack O'Callaghan. I think that's the only right answer. Okay. I'd love to go to a frat party with that guy. Wow. All right. <laughs> 3.40 on the clock. <laughs> Love the reasoning. You could take a math class with him. Coming <laughs> around is Egan. Marius pushed that away. Still kept their defensive zone. Pass off the color on the left side. Egan again, touching the puck. Comes around. They can't keep it in play. They'll skate back to the defensive zone, approaching the three-minute mark in the second period. A very smart play, very smart feed from Conlon there. Uh, to get it back out into the slot. Unfortunately, it was just kind of trickling wide of his open teammate. So Martyrs looking to get on the board here. Three to nothing. I wouldn't say it's imperative, but they definitely want to get at least the goal before the second period's over. Yeah, well, one thing I've always learned is you need more goals than the other team to win. I'm glad you've learned that. <laughs> As the goalie falls in the net, does it come off? I wonder when they're going to blow this one dead. <laughs> kept it in play. The net they'll went off. back himself. Now they pick there, it up. I think they saw the net coming forward, and they're like, oh, okay, wait a minute. The spokes came off. But I figured the goalie pushing it back would have been a sign to stop that. Referee gives a good old check. Checks on the goalie. 2.45 as charge is being played throughout the arena. Do you think you could play an organ? I think I could figure it out. I, so I could play one-hand piano. But I heard organs like... It's, oh, an organs like three pianos. Organs like piano kind of. and steroids. Yeah. So you got to know how to play four things at once. So I, I don't know. I mean, maybe. maybe. I, I, cool. I would try. I would definitely I try. I would want to play organ for like one of like those mega churches. <laughs> I thought you were going to say the blues guy. Because the blues guy is like famous on TikTok. The St. Louis guy. Nah. Their organist. He's really good. Mega church. <laughs> Approaching two minutes. They call icing 218 to be exact. Not a lot of icing calls in this one. No. Good for the pace of the game. A lot of offsides, though. Good for the, a lot of offsides. A lot of offsides. Like we said, momentum killers. That's why it's extra important to talk out there. Make sure you're on the same page when you're coming into the zone. Uh, because, like we said, if they call you offsides, you got to start over. Other teams can kind of regroup on defense and figure out where they stand. No, you're right. I mean, communication is key. It doesn't matter what sport you play, especially in hockey, but it's so fast-paced. So Rowan has possession of it now, approaching the two-minute mark. Behind the net they go. Rink poking his head on either side, kind of like a tortoise coming out of his shell. It's the first thing I thought of when he was poking his head out like that. There's Dyer off to Frateroli. The pass is in Guerra. One of the captains on the team looking for something. Won't get it. It's put along the boards, but Cully touches it again, passes it off to his left winger. Interrupted by Frateroli. Nagara on McCulley. Comes to the defensive zone. 130 on the clock. Time winding down here in the second period of play. Comes across now. Chandler with the D. Keeps it in play around the net. Inches. We're speaking inches the way that came through. We had a great angle on that shot. Ran at us right over uh, the shoulder, really. Yeah. That little space between him and the net. That's that's all it was. So, delayed penalty. <laughs> Both teams are assuming here. No one wants to touch the puck. <laughs> They'll take it amongst themselves to blow the whistle. Not sure if they don't understand what the refs were going on or the refs don't understand what the players were doing, but we talk about communication. It's key right here. They didn't even know who was, had the penalty. So, one minute, one second. Referees discussing what happened. So Moving the draw the outside the zone. Somebody yelled, hit him in the head. 
Not sure if that was in reference to this game or something else. But yeah, uh, I don't. We'll have a face off here. Yeah, yeah. Two minutes to go. <laughs> in the back left of the neutral zone, they go real high. Final minute of play here in the second, as announced by our PA. Passing through the middle, Cam Chan looking for his man left, takes a snipe shot instead. Misses, goes real low, like a nice little golf swing. Good recovery there by Bianchi. Not getting fooled there by the goalie pick, going right instead of facing left. Coming around now, 30 seconds. Here's Rudolph, have the goal from that same side. Chandler takes a shot at it, because why not? Coming around the net is Bianchi. Off to Scott, Chandler has it, now Scott again. Meant for Chandler, intercepted by the Marauders. 14 seconds. Looks like they're gonna get him on a slash. Another penalty here. Cohen touches it. We'll stop that clock at 7.4. Another penalty at the end of the period to bleed into the next. It was Scott behind the net, looking like he was making a play on the puck. Kind of just whipped his stick down, got him on the forearm, it looked like. Uh, so he's gonna have to sit out. The remaining 7.4 seconds here and a little bit of the third. That's his second penalty of the night. One per period, averaging one each. Yeah, that math checks up. Yeah, thanks. Now you're the teacher. <laughs> <laughs> you can tutor me. 7.4 left, a couple chances for Millersville, the five on four. They wheel around, can't keep it in the zone. They go neutral, back defensive, and that's gonna be the end of the second. 20 more minutes is what both teams will need to either pat on that 3-0 lead or to get on the board for Millersville. Any advice on what either team should do here? We'll hit you again with another, another period. From more of my sage player. wisdom, sure. Yeah. Uh, you know, well, like we said, Millersville, they really seem to pick it up there um, in the last kind of third of that period. Skating faster, getting more shots on net, playing a little more aggressive. Rowan kind of was picking it up, but it just seemed like a much more lackluster period. Uh, so hopefully they can go into the locker room, get refreshed, come back out, uh, maybe tack on a couple more to this lead. Send everyone home. Yeah, definitely flipped the script, but I agree with you. There's still a chance to put more on the board and get some more goals for either team. So that's the end of the second period. We're headed to the last intermission of the game before our last 20 minutes of play. You're listening live here to Roller Television Network on YouTube.
Well, welcome back to Holly Hill Ice Arena in Sioux, New Jersey. We're live here in the second intermission of play, waiting for the last 20 minutes of the game. Rowan leads three to nothing thus far in this matchup. Three zip. It's a good score. It's a good position for them to be in with 20 more to play. Uh, you take a look at this year. Rowan overall, 91 goals for. And uh, in conference play, 22 goals for. Millersville with 59 in their own conference. So you'd expect this kind of out pro, out, uh, outcome for the profs. Uh, I would have expected Millersville to get on the board with you know their high goal total throughout this year. Um, but we just want to take a second now to shout out our lovely crew here at Rowan Television Network. It's all student run. Uh, this whole production is coming to you at the hands of Rowan communication students, Rowan RTF students. Um, there they are now. I want to just give them some love, our behind the scenes guys. That's usually us, Spencer. It usually is. We took usually a break, jumped up chairs. in the booth over here. I know. Is They're this warming a promotion? Up the chairs for us. Is this a promotion? Or I, I mean, you can promote or demote it. I don't, maybe Holden can let us know. I don't. Holden is our uh, <laughs> chief engineer. Yep. Wonderful job. Very knowledgeable on all the. Uh, on all the toys and all the tricks. Yeah. Alex Pitts, our on director, technical director. Yeah. Who we got on camera? Abby, Nick Wiley, Carrie, Aiden. Phenomenal crew all out here tonight. Yep. John and on John soundboard, on right. of course, yeah. making sure we sound all right. And uh, then you got us. Yeah, we got us goons over here in the booth <laughs> looking like we do. Very happy so, to be here. Great game thus far, right? We said 3 nothing. Rowan's got a lot of opportunity to pad on this lead. Gets momentum for the Stockton game tomorrow. Two must-win games. Or secure, although they're out of conference, still looks really good for the record when you come to regional play and national play. We discussed before off the air before this game started, only a couple games away from nationals last season. This is their chance to go get it back. And that's ultimately the goal for, you know, you got to think this team, for every team that competes at any level, you want to be the best. And uh, I think they have a real shot to do it this year. Oh, they do, yeah. Great team, great coaching. Um, if I was on the team, I'd be confident. I'm confident from all the <laughs> way up your here. Ankle. It's just so, the ankle, right? Got to look forward to that. <laughs> so we're getting ready here for the face-off in center ice. Both teams coming set again. Minnesota University Martyrs, Rowan University Profs coming together very soon. Fruition, this third period of play. 20 minutes left is all they'll have. Millersville really got to come on the board again. We talked about how, you know, another period starts with another penalty kill for Rowan. This might be Millersville's chance to get on the board. And like we said, you know, less guys on the ice, a little more space. More, uh, more room for the, ski the skaters to create. Uh, Millersville kind of yeah. they stepped it up in that last period. I think they get on the board in this one, but um, we'll have to see what happens. Rink has had a fantastic game so far. Yeah. He's just been in great position on every shot, uh, shutting down every chance, even on the tougher ones mm -hmm. where they're getting those cross ice passes. Uh, so phenomenal defense all around from the cross. I think if anyone's going to get, you got to get to McCulley. He's their guy. Like we said, 42 points. 43 from the, points. 43 for the Marauders, yes. 21 and 22. It's like, wow. Unbelievable. Absolutely, they had to get that many uh, points. Absolutely ridiculous numbers. Ovechkin-esque. Ovechkin-esque. Dare I say. We're going to go. Dare so I Ovechkin say. Ovechkin is the cheap shot, though. I don't know if you want to give him that. All ah, right. Well. So we see this guy skinny on the ice, getting ready. There's Cohen. Opening the door from his teammate. There's Dan Owens. And Cutler giving out taps as they take the ice for the third. Again, a minute 53 on that power play. Getting set, stretching out, getting ready for this last 20 minutes. Both teams hopefully amped up to finish this one out strong. Seems like a conga line. You think it's the last one? You know, we like, were nope, talking about got another. the playing surface, right? Looking down now, I can see it's really not that too level. There's a lot of uh, pretty deep divots. Some places, the Zamboni, uh, when it just ran over, hasn't <laughs> totally... Doesn't totally match the rest of the ice. Maybe we were onto something. I gotta say, I don't see it in this game, but what I really like is when some goalies, they'll actually make their own little walls on the left and right side to block a puck. So you don't see it on rink side, but there's other goalies I've seen. They go back and forth, they're talking about the ice. The little little fortress of just snowflakes. And the players just go in there and slipping and falling. Looking over at the uh, Marauders bench, pretty quiet. Hopefully they can bring out some energy. But for there, hopefully, yeah. they can bring out some energy from the locker room. Here comes the rest of the Roman squad coming out of the locker room. Bring skating up around. Fratteroli. Nice goal earlier in this one in the second period. 
him, Schroeder, and Randolph will get one apiece thus far. You can imagine coming out of the locker room, can't imagine what the coaches could say more to them besides continue to put the pressure on. You can't let up. There's always an opportunity for someone to come back, and you don't want that. Especially, like we said, coming out, get again for the third period of play with a guy in the box. Props get their closing remarks from head coach Dan DeMonte. Scott, minute 53 to go. And they'll make their way over to the circle. There's some unison there from the bench with the Martyrs. They send out Tanner Schroeder at center. Deciding on the fourth man. Nothing like waiting until the last minute, huh? Almost got the too many men on penalty. They'll have on Ardite as well, and Cohen, as well as Conlon. Two of the biggest guys in the ice there with Conlon and Cohen. Schroeder pokes it away. They keep it in the neutral zone, hoping to push over that blue line. Yes, they do. There's McCulley. Back over to the defensive pairing. Back to McCulley. Into the slot. Poked away by Cohen and Conlon. Comes around. McCulley has possession up against the wall. Boarded by Cohen. Takes a shot. Dives down. His own teammate can jump over. Great Heads work up by thinking. Cohen to get a stick on that one. Kind of ricochet off into the corner. And an even more acrobatic gallop over his teammate who's down on the ice. Shot by Rink. McCulley a little bit too late on that shot on the rebound. Had the right idea. He would have got it in if he was just a second earlier. Pushed out there. 18.50 on the clock. 40 seconds just about left on the penalty kill for Rowan. Rolls back around their own goalie. Passes it back out. Still with the five on four. Looking to make an opportunity out of this. Or taking a chance at the opportunity, however. Goalie steps out of net to help his cause. You can always appreciate that. So here comes the offensive line. 15 seconds on the power play for the Martyrs. Skating around. They've probably got one big possession left here. They can get it past that neutral zone. Coming down to five. They get it past the blue line. Two on four. They'll take a shot. Pushed away with the blocker. Left pad of Rink. Well, kill that penalty. Scott comes out yet again. Three to go. Had the right idea on that last rush. Uh, Brink was just able to push it wide with his toe. Tries to deke around, and that is Egan. Won't get it in time. 17.50 left in regulation. Coming back and forth on the wall. They don't know the puck's loose. The Martyr's coming out. On his left side, pokes right. Brink waiting for him. Gets the ice and call. Doesn't have to lift the glove. If you could play any other position besides, I guess, center and left wing, it doesn't leave you too many other options. What would you have played? <laughs> you already uh, got two, but... Yeah. He's doing pretty well percentage-wise. I guess, um, <laughs> I don't know. I'm not exactly big enough to be a defenseman, so I guess I would just jump to the other side of the circle and be a right wing. I would love to be a goalie. I never had to play ice hockey, but I'd love to play goalie. Equipment's way too expensive, but, like, it's got to yeah. be awesome. Especially if you're good at it, like, you're the guy. What if you're not good at it? You can still be. Uh, you always guy. need goalie. We're all no, these goalies no, no. and base players. Yeah, but if you're a goalie and you're not good, that's it's not a good look. Comes back out another souvenir for the fans. We'll take it. Right up here. Toss it up. Excuse me, miss. Oh, with the Rowan logo? Yeah, whatever. Maybe? No. No, they didn't get it. I Pretty think sure it's a Hollydale logo. It. Is it a Rowan logo? No, it's Rowan. Brandon Rowan. Pucks. It says Rowan Hockey's got the little torch on top. That's how I saw it, the torch. Well, I'll be. Yeah, well, I'll be, well, I'll be there, man. Mm. 17.22 on the clock. Still haven't heard your Canadian impression yet. Still 40 minutes through the game. Still haven't well, heard Canadian this, impression, this eh? Canadian guy hasn't Sorry, come Sorry, I out forgot yet. to give it to you. Yeah, Paul Key. So joining the booth now is um, Lee. I'm not doing an impression. Is um, uh, Lee Kassan coming in from Montreal, Canada. I thought you were going to say Ontario. No. You ever been to Canada? I wish. I never left the country. <laughs> I wish. I don't have a passport. It's Friday rolling, 17 Didn't minutes left. One. It's cheaper than goalie equipment. Off the skate. Really? Probably. Nah, come on. <laughs> no way. No way, bro. So it comes across. They almost get a breakaway chance. The backhanded pass blocked there. Way to use your body garrison. Coming around. There's Keys. Gets put into the wall. Garrett has pressure. The block by Dyer. Again, we were saying that all night. Block shots 
are a tremendous help to your team and to your goalie. If you can stop the puck from getting to the net, you stop any potential for them to get one past. You're doing a good job at it. Fatteroli staying on it. He's making sure he's on the puck almost at all times. When he's on the ice, he's near it or he's touching it. Randolph looks like a pass there. Or Rudolph, excuse me. Backhanded pass and attempt to dump it out. Saved by Rowan's offensive line. Put back around. There's Thomas. Looking to get it. Won't have it. Lost to Millersville on the right side. Stuck in that corner again. Finally, they're going to pick up that drop stick. Chilling the neutral zone for the greater part yeah. of 20-some seconds. <laughs> So still stuck in that corner, going back and forth. Haven't been able to leave that. It must be a curse over there. Same thing happened with Rowan during the second period. The lighting's different over there. That's what it is. It must be. <laughs> they can't see over there. You know, the x-ray goggles. Comes around. Here's Rudolph. Passed it along the wall. The shot by Chandler right into the chest of the goalie to stop that clock at 15-10. And that didn't seem like there was much hope behind the shot. Kind of just get one in, hope for a stoppage so they can get a line change here. Yeah, they're trying to stop momentum and get things started again. So face off in the back left circle they go. There's Chandler rowing up 3-0. 15 minutes left in the game. Comes around to the opposite side. Recovered there by Egan. Comes back around the side. Millersville has possession. A little bit of spin. Won't get it. Lost to the Martyrs. Through neutral zone. Past the blue line they go. David Cutler around his goalie over to Egan. An attempt to do the same back to him. Won't get it in time. Shot right off the rebound. Into the glove of Rink. And you love to see that if you are a prof. Uh, you know, silly mistake. Rink doesn't let it get by him. Still able to make the save and come up big for his team. They're doing a really good job at it this game. A lot of pushing and... Well, I would say more of the shots he's blocked or pushing away, but that one he's able to grab in his glove. So the right side's gone. Dangerous bounce off the dumping, off the boards, yeah. off the glass, over the net, into the crease. That's like some trick shot over there. Something's it's going like on. Like they're playing horse with Larry Bird. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> McDonald's commercial. Off the score. I'm not a McDonald's guy. And we're not talking about Jake McDonald on the row, and I'm talking fast food. But Chris Conley takes whiff the shot back over the neutral zone. They go. Icing called. They'll get it, and they'll go back in the defensive zone against Millersville. Thirteen fifty-one is what that clock reads. If you take a look at some of these shots here on the broadcast, these players look a little gassed at the end of this game. Pretty long night, pretty physical night too, more importantly. So it makes sense yes. that this one's kind of taking a toll on them. A lot of upper body strength for both teams being shown. Rudolph keeps it in play in front of the blue line, comes around the net, behind the goalie, wheels around to the right side now, left the board. Gets pushed out by Marauders. Tries to come in front of it, loses it on the right side. Behind the goalie, they go. The assistant. They're circling around a couple of Rowan defenders. Again, a heavy offensive presence. Both defenders hugging that blue line. Attempting to leave their own zone attempt and reaching the 13 minute mark. They finally get past that blue line. Humming through, looking for a chance to shoot. Conley doesn't give him the opportunity. Schroeder had a great job staying involved there, trying to break up their breakout. And now he's got the puck on his stick. And a dump is definitely what Rowan needed. Gets you guys off the ice. Cully loses possession. Now off to Schroeder. Who had the goal in the beginning of this game, just 18 seconds in. 
comes around, shot real wide, right up against the goalie, parallel with him. Zagara keeping it in, goes right to left, pass it over to Dyer, Dyer humming the right side, over to Fred Roli, right to left he goes, it's in the net, and it's a goal. Gonna give it to him. The Looks net like the comes net got off. dislodged after the puck was already in the net. Excuse my confusion during the goal call, but the spokes came off. I wasn't, I wasn't sure if I was going to go through with it. Phenomenal move by Fratteroli. We'll take a look at it here. Or at least we'll try to. Anyway, uh, <laughs> great move off the pass. Um, a nice assist for Dyer on that one. Fratteroli was able to cut back across the middle, push it past the goalie, make it 4 nothing now for Rowan. I would say excuse our confusion on the play. We're blocked a little bit by the wall here in the booth. Um, booth up, top. Is generous. up top. We're, we're outside of the bar with the kegs, everybody. <laughs> they, they come set again. Anyway, Fred Early had great composure down Good low. Um, able to see that one out despite the possibly dislodged net. We don't know. So Garrison off the keys. Looking for another one. Four to nothing is a score in favor of Rowan. Another stick falls on the ground. That's the fourth of the game. And yes, I've been keeping track. <laughs> Wish I would have kept track of how many people fell, though. That would have been good. I would say over under 10, I'm hammering the over. I'd say that's fair. I'd take those odds, Spence. Do you take those odds? Let's, you're going to give me a bookie now? We're going DraftKings? Well, I'm not a betting man <laughs> except for when I make a bunch of $3 bets on the Eagles. So oh. do with that what you will. Ah, uh, okay. The team that just buys I'll Tell you what, though, Boston Scott, anytime touchdown looks very appetizing. <laughs> the shot there by Rowan's offense. David Cutler recovers on the right side. Martyrs now have it. Trying to cut through this defense. Takes a shot, and again, right to that glove of Rink. Good little snatch. Sorry. Always in the best position. Always has the oh, right yeah. angle. He's having a great night. Scoreboard says so, too. So, like I said, we did do a piece on them during the broadcasting class. We asked Rink, we're like, and I'm sure you get this a lot. Your name's Kyle Rink. You play hockey. Do you get any recognition for that? He's like, not a lot of people talking about that. I was like, really? Your name's Rink? A lot of people come to you and go, oh, that's, that's a hockey name? And he's like, no. All right. Another Nonetheless, shot. got a great glove. So skating is Bianchi on the left side, approaching halfway through the third. Gets pushed behind the goalie on enemy territories. Martyrs come back around. Ball on the wall. Icing is called. The hum back over 10.39 on the clock. Rowing up four to nothing here in the third period. Four to nothing. About halfway through. Yeah. Putting a heavy offensive presence. Like we said this whole game, they flip it one more time just to let us know in the booth that they do know how to play offense. We said, hey, you're not being aggressive enough. They go, hey, watch this. And they put it in. Yeah, they're watching. They're watching us over they're on the They're watching and listening. They're, they're, we're, they're listening to what's going on. But, you know, like we said, just at the intermission break, 91 goals this year. That's both conference and non-conference play. But uh, they're a team that scores the puck. That's their MO, and they're doing so tonight. They've done so four times. And they can make that 95. Sure can. Yeah, because that was pre-game. 91 plus 4. Before the game, yeah. A lot, of math, a lot of math. I don't have a calculator group. up here. I might have to. But I'll take your word for it. <laughs> I'm going to have to ask the mathematician for that one to double check that. Where's our stats guy? Ah, we need a stats guy. So the Marauders come past the blue line. Two on two. Real high and wide. Slapped away by Schroeder. He's come to the fray. Pushes it out. There's Schroeder. Off the left side, there's Conlin. With the two on three, homie on the left side, tries to get past, won't get it. Lose control, picks it up again. Now in front of the net. Good little move by Conlon to get around and get into the zone. Uh, unfortunately, there's just nobody really to receive his pass in good positioning. Really bullied his way through that one. The shot from Rudolph comes off weak. Almost a putback there from Bianchi. Good approach by Rudolph, though. Get it on net when the goalie can't see you. A lot of bodies in the way. Uh, a lot of potential for maybe a deflection or for yeah. the goalie to just lose sight of the puck. And he'll touch that again and bring it back into play. There's Cohen. 
on the left side, passing off the Frateroli. The Martyrs have possession yet again, their defensive zone. Getting over the blue line is the name of the game for Millersville. They dump and chase. Rudolph attempts to pass it back out. Through someone's skates. Zangara has it with the three on two. Coming through, staying on sides. Fred Roli, a little too far ahead. Could have made something out of that one. Less than nine left in the game. A shot there from Cohen grabbed up with the chest of Millersville's goal. A theme throughout tonight. We've noticed it just now when the props are breaking out. In the neutral zone, kind of a weak back check from the Marauders. Uh, they've just trailing behind a lot. Gives Rowan extra time to get set up in the zone as they're still trailing to come back into theirs. You're exactly right with that. They get ready in that far face off left circle, the top left. Come ready, here's Rowan. Millersville wins the draw. Off to the right side, up against that wall. Taken away by Rowan's D. Back and forth in that corner yet again. 8.35 on the clock. Going for the icing. They won't get it. They'll take it back and play. Cohen says, I don't want to do it. He'll have it on the left side. Goes past both blue lines. Puts it up against the wall. Tries to pass to a teammate. Cutler had it. Great up awareness by Cutler to dump that one back in. Keep it in the zone. Comes shy again. 8.05 left in regulation. Along the wall they go. Here's Millersville through the neutral zone. Around rink, Cohen. Another board battle on the right side. Almost a high stick there, but keeps it just a little low. Just in the little range where you can't call it yet, or just yet. Cutler puts it out, recovered by the defense. And I guess they're gonna call that on the open door where that puck went. Took a deflection, hit off the door, came back into play. I don't think it really affected Just the trajectory the opening. of the puck. I, mean, I don't think so. But you know, it is out of play. Yeah, it technically is out of play. The door is open if it goes out. But they're saying it hit that little opening on the hinge, maybe. Ah, the crevice. Mm -hmm. It went in the crevice. So the face-off circle closest to Rowan's bench, they go. They lose the face-off, but recover from the no defensive zone. Here's Egan behind the net. Fakes left, goes right, passes off to Chandler. Chandler looking for a man. Almost taking the other Marauders. Scott had it, lost it, way too ahead, far of it. Martyr falls down. Chandler takes possession again, puts it in front of Rink. Off to Cutler, Cutler now to Scott. Scott humming. Team in on the side. Would have been a nice setup there for Bianchi. Scenario like that. He had an opportunity on net, but just tried to do a little too much to get around those guys as opposed to just firing one on and hoping for a good bounce. See, that would have been Ovi-esque. If Bianchi scores oh, a goal right. there, that's okay. Ovi-esque. Because he's sitting right there. Just waiting. He's like, yo, pass it. Boom, and it puts yeah, it in. He's close to 802 there, right? Yeah. yeah, something like that. <laughs> he's getting the grays and the beard. No teeth. Uh, fin the description. So we got Chandler. Psychs himself out there. Spins around. Cutler recovers by the blue line. Looking for a shot. Good defense here by Millersville. Providing a presence, not letting him get a walk the puck in. Bianchi again. Cutler's going to get called here. Big shove down in the corner. So it's another penalty. Millersville gets the chance to get on the board here. 4 to nothing. 6.23 on the clock. Going to be a two-minute call on minor. They've the had fourth. many opportunities. Yeah. Just a very unsuccessful power play tonight. Over three thus far, they can make over four. And a baseball, that's not that bad of a number. 250. Thus not that more great, credit but not that bad. To Kyle Rink, they've had yes. these power plays, they've had these opportunities, they've been getting shots on net. They've been creating motion, and they're getting their shots off. He's stood tall, though. That and the block shots from the props. And Rowan's only had a couple of opportunities on their own power play, which are also unsuccessful. So the five on four, wheeling around. Here's McCulley. At the right face-off circle, or excuse me, left. The pass over to the right side, the right wing, takes a shot. McCulley backhanded pass, won't get it. 
and a dump. He said he tips it. No icing. 125 left in the power play for Millersville. 545 on the game clock. Looking for another opportunity again. Everyone seems standstill, just shifting over, playing the zone, not the man. That's what you got to do, the box defense. Cully, poke check by Egan. Off the left wing, would have had a chance there one timer there. They pulled that goalie so far left. At the top of that blue line, passes it around. 5.15 on the clock. 45 seconds on the penalty kill for Rowan. Garrison's been making some great reads on the puck. He's been able to jump in and intercept a couple of passes just within the last few seconds. Well, you're right, the, the defenseman graduate student from New Egypt doing a really good job adding presence there. You get a full line change, all four members off. Echeverria steps on, Schroeder, as well as Ardite, and Cohen. 4.45 on the clock, just 20 seconds left for the five on four for Millersville. An opportunity to get on the board here. They come to the face-off circle on his opposite side. The backhanded pass. Over the faceoff, so I don't think he was going to go that far. There he was looking for the one tee. A weak slap shot. was all for show. And there's a slapping of the stick. Not a clank. Just what we talked about. The slapping, not the clank. There's 420 left on the clock. And the penalty has been cleared. So yet again, we go back to full strength. Five on five as they get ready to put one. I don't even say on the board. We'll just say on the scoreboard. Millersville around the net. Cohen takes it on the left side, the far side. Comes back around the Martyrs trying to clear their zone. Less than four minutes in this game. Seems to think, it seems as if it's almost slowed down just a little bit on both sides. We saw for a little Millersville trying to push the pace, trying to uh, run the game in the speed of which, and now Rowan's kind of slowing it down. Taking their time. Still plenty of pushing and shoving though, a little chirping down there. He takes that shot, stops the clock at 3.35 as the goalie snaps that up to stop it another time. So, I'm not, maybe they're not sure what phase off circle they're going to, but there's a lot of standing around. They finally get it. The top far left near the Rowan Women's Hockey Championship flags, or banners, if you will. They win that face off. Back in the pass from Frateroli over to Dyer. Dyer has it. Skating through traffic. Puts it on the other board. Touches the top of that net. Comes back in play, stopping at 319. As you can see, Ring's getting a lot of time to skate around here in the defensive zone. Got to stay warm somehow. They'll choose the other face-off circle on the left side of the ice to start this off. Counting down for the three-minute mark. Martyrs attempting to get out of their zone yet again. Up against the left wall. Comes up, almost grazes that ceiling. With a one on three, looks to make something out of it. Garrison with the poke check and shove. Keys over to the side. Frateroli looking for a man. Zagara's waiting. Zagara does not get it in time. Comes across. Behind the net they go. Looks like he flicked it just a little too hard. Maybe a little too much power on that saucer. Trying to get it into the slot for Zangara. Another chance to almost finish there. Make another goal. Make it a 5 to nothing. 2.35 is what the clock will read. Frateroli just takes a shot because why not from the neutral zone. Goes right into their glove. Is it cold in here? You cold? The fingers, I'm feeling it now. A cold. Everything else is good, but I feel it in the fingertips. I would have brought gloves, but I kind of felt like a mittens evening. Well, uh, lucky for you. I want mittens. I brought two pairs of gloves. I, I brought one worn pair of gloves. mittens in a while. They're thermal heated. Uh, pay attention. I got them, they just, dropped them just so I can go. <laughs> when I'm doing camera work, I could you know, do all my things, do all my phone. A one man band you are. Yeah, something like that. So on the defensive zone, 220 left in the game. Lizville has it. Scott recovers along the wall. The far left. There's Chandler as well as Cutler. Again, stuck on that side. It doesn't matter what team it is. 
comes around. Rowan takes possession back and forth like a seesaw. There's Scott on the right side with the face-off circle. Pa passes it around. Bianchi with the shot. Comes back, 145. Over now, still in the corner. Back out to the point. Spencer's got his headset back on, finally. Cutler fired one in. Bounced into the corner again, and now we're back up to the point. 130 left in this game. I was coughing. I didn't want to even call me out, but <laughs> all right. There you go. So, David Cutler. Go complain to a producer. We are the producers. <laughs> Comes around. Last minute of play here. Canadian's still stuck in his box. Yeah, the Bialy should talk to my bloom, Spence. <laughs> I don't even know what that means, but okay, here for it. David Cutler on the left side. Officially the last minute of play, skating around, and again, time seems to be slowing down for both teams here, taking their last efforts. Takes a shot, down to 55. Up along the wall. Marauders recover, down to 45 seconds left in regulation. Coming back, looking to get just one goal here. Along the right board. Thumps all the way to the left. Taken away by Cutler. Around the goalie they go to buy some time. There's Rudolph on the left side with their near face-off circle. Recover by the Martyrs. Takes a shot far left. 25 seconds left. Conlin attempts to put it in the zone. They'll keep it neutral. Goes past the blue line. Millersville. Back over. Rudolph to Schroeder. Conlin has it now. Up against the wall, back and forth they go. 10 seconds left. And the dump by Schroeder. We'll see if they make one more attempt here. Doesn't look like it. And the buzzer sounds just like that. Play the RU fight song as Rowan comes up for the 4-0 shutout. Fantastic game all around for the profs. Uh, Kyle Rink's play really stood out. Always seemed to be in the right position uh, when his team needed it. And, you know, like we said the whole time, a lot of block shots for Rowan really is going to help them, you know, later down the line, help them here tonight. Some solid, solid goals, good shooting, um, and a lot of good cross-ice passes. Very good analysis, Kowalski. I appreciate that. Did a good job with the Penguins of Madagascar there, for those who got that. The players line up, shaking some hands as a well-fought battle for both teams. Rowan now comes out on top, 95 goals on the season after getting four tonight. It's a good number. Making that their 15th win with three games left in their 2022-2023 season. And that's what do it here for us in Rowan Television Network here live in Hilo Ice Arena, Sula, New Jersey. I'm Spencer Hayes. He's been Lee Cotson. Thank you so much for tuning in. And be sure to watch on Live Barn tomorrow when they play Stockton here live against the Ospreys in Sewell, New Jersey.